Welcome back guys and if you're new here my name is Adam Brazier I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in London. Today we're going to do an editing tutorial based on just one of the images I've taken previously and we're going to go from start to finish exactly kind of what I'll do in the editing process. So let's get into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop so the first thing I want to do because I'm going to post this on Instagram is make it a four by five ratio. So it's going to come to my crop tool because we've got a nice clean outside I can hold option drag this up and it's going to make me a nice four by five grid. And you'll notice you've got black lines on the left and right of this photo and also the top as well. And what's also worth considering is on Instagram, when you post, it's going to crop to a square. So you want to make sure you've got enough headroom there so it doesn't crop the head off when you see it on the overall feed. So let's bring that up a little bit more. And then what I want to make sure I'm clicking is content aware at the top here that's going to fill in this outside edge based on what else is in the photo. So now this is done, you can see it's filled in the edge really nicely there. There's nothing I have to kind of go and tweak. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is do a bit of background cleanup. So whenever you're working on one of these color armors, you sometimes get a bit of creases like in the paper, some little marks on it from like previous shoots or just anything that's just kind of on there uh, if it's not a fresh roll. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to make sure I'm on my background layer, select subject cool. and I also want to include the chair in this as well so I'm just going to select this brush tool here and then just add the bits I need into it and I can hold option and just delete the bits I don't want in there and then it's just a matter of going backwards and forwards and just slowly adding in all the bits that you need so just a quick check around yep everything else is perfect so I'm going to go select so I want to basically make this a bit wider, modify, expand. I'll probably do this about 50 pixels. And then I just want to feather that edge. So I'm going to go select, modify, feather, 25. So that's about half of the 50. So I kind of want to come back in half the way, but not all of the way. I've got a nice selection there that's feathered. So I'm going to go select inverse because I want to just select the background not the actual subject uh, and I'm going to copy command C or control C and then paste control V command V. So now what I've got here is if I just turn just that on you can see it's just got the background selected there. So I notice there's actually a little hole here so I'm just going to press B for the brush tool and I'm just going to paint over that just to fill that in to make sure my flow is high. With this top layer selected, I'm going to click hold command and click that layer, and that's going to select just that layer. And what I'm going to do now is put a mask on that. And that's going to basically mask off just the background, so it's only leaving what's there. What I want to do now is just click this little link button between the two, and then that's going to separate those. So whatever I do to just the image won't affect the mask at all. If you leave it on, it'll affect both. So if you blurred one, it would blur the other. But I want to just blur just the image, not the mask. So I've removed that link. So now with this layer selected, I can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'll probably set this to quite a high pixel radius. So I've got about 100 pixels here. And you can see if I turn the preview on and off there, you can start to see how some little kind of dots on the background just start to dis just disappear. And it just tidies up really nicely, kind of smooths it out. It really depends what look you're going for, but you could leave that there as like a really smooth background. But what I like to do is put a bit of grain on it just to kind of make it feel a bit more real. So it's still got a bit of paper texture. It's just a lot smoother than it was before. So what I'm going to do is go to filter, camera raw filter. And I'm just going to come down to effects and just put a small amount of grain on that. Now, if you look at the background, you can see you've got a level of grain in the background, which just kind of continues to give it that paper-like feel so it still feels like it's an actual material rather than just a nice gradient in the background. So we've cleaned up the background now what we're going to do is clean up the skin so what I'm going to do is make a new folder here which is going to call this healing. I'm going to make two layers in here one for the healing brush and one for clone. So we're going to start off with the healing brush so this is to get rid of kind of major things so for example like hairs kind of bigger blemishes. So I'm going to press A to go to my healing brush and then I'm just going to hold option, sample some a good piece of texture nearby, and then just slowly paint on 
So what I've noticed here is I've only got current layer selected. What I need to do is go current and below. That's going to affect everything below it. So option, you can start to see as I start to paint, that hair just disappears. So I'm going to go around the image and just do this on all of the major spots. What I find with hairs as well is it's better not to do it in just one big long sweep. It's kind of better to just do short bits at a time. And then also with my mouse or um, graphics tablet as I'm using here, almost do little circles as you're painting. But yeah, I'm using a trackpad here, but you can quite easily do it with a mouse or I've done it with just my laptop trackpad before. So it's possible whatever you're doing. Yes, yeah, so you'll notice I'm just doing like little bits at a time rather than trying to tackle the whole thing. And you just seem to get slightly better results if you do that. Like with retouching, generally, if you take your time doing something, it generally ends up better. Cuts there. We're just going to move down the face and just any little bits that we see, we're just going to touch up along the way. And what's good about doing this on a separate layer is the fact that we can turn it on and off and see where we've got to. And if we go too far, we can always erase some of that and then bring it back. So I always avoid any kind of like major creases. So under the eyes, kind of around the mouth, that's not something I would do with the healing brush. That's something I'd save for later. And you can soften it a bit more realistically rather than just wiping out the whole thing because people have lines on their face. So you don't want to just completely remove them. I'm using the squared bracket keys on my keyboard to make the brush like larger and smaller. Like having your fingers, as you're doing this kind of like just over the two keys, just really helps kind of like go up, go down, just in a couple of taps rather than having to go all the way to the top, change the size and come back down. So yes, yeah, so that's the, the squared bracket keys if you didn't hear that. So it's worth kind of like zooming in and out just so you can kind of see what it looks like from afar. And then if you notice anything else, like having a view from different zooms is um, really effective to kind of just spot things that you don't spot at certain other angles. And then what you can also do as well is hold R, rotate the image, and then you just, just by seeing it in a different angle, you really start to notice things that you didn't notice elsewhere. Cool, so I'm quite happy with how that's looking so far. So if we look at a before and after from what we've done already, you can see... how actually quite a small amount of work can lead to quite good results. So already like the skin there, you could just leave it there, like that is great. Uh, but I think what we want to do is take it one step further and just smooth out the texture in areas that we don't need as much texture. So that's when we're going to come up to the clone tool. So my on a separate layer here on the clone layer, I'm going to come to clone. I'm going to keep the flow low to so maybe like maybe 10%. And again, current and below, same as before. And then anywhere the texture seems a bit too rough or somewhere that you kind of want to lower the texture a bit, what you can do is just, actually maybe I'll lower my flow to about five. Hold option and then just slowly paint just a couple of strokes at a time and you really start to smooth out the texture. Again, always sampling from somewhere that's really close by and moving in the same direction as the head. So you want to follow along the same line. So for example, down here, down here, Anywhere you can kind of see shapes and patterns within the skin, try and always follow those and it will look so much more natural in the end. If I want to lower all this, I can just kind of give it a really light brush over. It's quite a bit of texture here between the eyebrows, so what I might do, lighten that up a little bit. Again, we're not getting rid of all the texture, we're just like lowering it a little bit so it's less noticeable. And this is where we can start to do, if you want to lower any wrinkles or anything that's kind of more of a crease, by selecting nearby and having it a really low flow, you can just lower them just by slowly going over them, and maybe feathering it out at the edge so it feels like it is a natural kind of fade out. So you'll see we haven't completely got rid of it, we've just lowered the harshness of it. Yeah, so just coming around, just softening any texture that needs to be softened. But again, this is all personal preference, so you can kind of go as hard or as little as you want. All I would say is just never go too far because as soon as you start going too far and smoothing out too much, it just looks really unrealistic. 
And you can see here as well, so I made a mistake there. I took from a light area and painted over this dark area and it actually lightened that. So what I wanted to do there is pick up somewhere along the same line that's of a similar colour and then paint that in. And then the results are much better. So it's worth sampling as close to the part you're actually doing as possible because the skin texture is going to be more similar and the colours are going to match a lot better. But yeah, this is again why we have it at a low flow. So I've only got this set to five here because then that's going to blend a bit better with what's below it rather than just like fully painting over it with 100%. Cool. And I've just noticed some other little bits on the lips here that I want to touch up. Um, so I'm going to go back to the healing brush and just do a couple of little bits there. As well, I haven't mentioned before, but if you're using the healing brush, clicking this legacy button at the top uh, gives you slightly better results than just the ordinary one. So I definitely recommend that. Cool, that's looking good. And this is the kind of thing you could spend all day on, getting really like picky about all the little bits, but there's only so much you need to do. Cool, so yeah, if I zoom out to here, and I just turn this on and off, the whole group, you can kind of see where we started and then like how smooth that looks now. And this is just with healing. This is before we've done anything else. Cool, so I'm going to have a quick look around the body now just to see if there's any other little bits here. So I'm just going to take off this line here where it looks like a hair tie has been around the wrist. That's always a good thing to look out for because there's always hair ties around wrists. And then there's a bruise down on the leg here. So I'm just going to have a slightly bigger brush. What I find as well with the healing brush, because what it does is it copies from another area. If you've got something like a mole or a freckle or something that then duplicates, I'd then try and remove one of the duplications just so you don't see that repeated pattern within the skin. So it's always worth yeah, keeping in mind, has it copied anything? Does it look obviously the same as somewhere else? Yeah, that's looking good. And you can use the same technique. This is where to take any, if you've got any hairs or any kind of bits of dust or something on fabric. Like fortunately, this is quite a shiny fabric, so it's quite forgiving in that sense. But if you had a black t-shirt, for example, you'd probably see little speckles of dust or something on there that you could edit out during this period. Yeah, so that's before and after already. You can see like what a difference that makes and how well it actually works on removing that bruise there and sorting out the skin on the face. For the next level, we're going to make another group. We're going to call this Dodge and Burn. Make two curves adjustment layers. One we're going to drag up. And we're going to go Command I to invert that. So it's got a black mask here. And then we're going to duplicate it and then come back and make the other one a negative curve. So it curves downwards. So the one with the downwards curve, we're going to call burn, and that's going to be our darkening layer. And then this one, if you double click on this symbol here, you'll get the graph come up. You can see that's going higher, so that's going to be our dodge layer. And then we're going to make another folder now, and we're just going to call this help. So in here, I'm going to make a new layer. In this layer, I'm going to do a solid color. I'm going to come down to 50% here, which should be 80, 80, 80. And you'll notice that on RGB, this is 128, 128, 128. Change that blend mode to saturation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to rasterize this layer. Then you can go filter, noise, add noise. So uniform, monochromatic, and then just make sure this is, yeah, that should be fine. About 25% there. But that would depend on the size of your image. So if you've got quite a small image, you might find that that's a bit too much. If you've got a really large image, you might find that's a bit lower. So just play around with that until it's kind of, until it works for you. I'm just going to change this layer to overlay. And what we'll notice there is it's now put grain all over the top of our image. What this does is it helps us kind of stop looking at the tiny, tiny details and just look at the bigger areas. So we can see where the skin blends and where the kind of main color areas are. If it's too much, you can just lower the opacity. But yeah, this is more kind of thinking about getting rid of the general skin texture. So you're not focusing on that. You're more focusing on like the bigger details as this is a more zoomed out image. 
So next thing we're going to do is just do a curves layer. There's a lot of process setting this up, but once you've done it a few times or if you set up an action, you can do it almost instantly. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do here is just make this a bit more of an extreme curve, just so I can really start to see where the shadows and highlights are kind of really blending well and where they kind of need a bit more smoothing between the two. So now this help layer set up, we can kind of turn it on and off easily. Um, we're going to go. We're going to go to the dodge layer, and we're just going to start lightening areas that don't blend quite well with others. So you can see, kind of around the chin here, is a bit of a darker spot there. So what our aim is to go B to go brush. We get our flow down to one or two percent. I'm going to go one percent here. We want it to be the white in your palette, and we're basically going to paint onto the mask on the dodge layer. And you can see if I set this to one hundred percent how it will just lighten wherever you're going to paint. So by having this on 1%, it's going to do this really delicately. And what we want is the transitions between these greys to be smooth. So we can kind of see here it's a bit darker. We've got a light patch here. So we're just going to slowly paint over and just blend things together. So everything just blends like a lot smoother. If we think about kind of painting like a sphere, how it would be a really smooth shape, that's kind of what we're thinking about with the skin here to just make sure that everything flows between the different kind of surfaces, the different contours. So we can see across the cheek here, we've got a really dark line that goes quite harshly into a light. So it's going to kind of slowly paint, kind of lighten up that edge just to make that contrast and make the kind of transition between the two a lot softer. And that's our aim with dodge and burn to just make sure that all the transitions are nice and smooth between the different bits here. And it's just continuing to paint around and again you can hold press r to rotate to different angles so you start to see different shapes in different positions and it's all about just painting on the lightness so you start to sculpt the image exactly how you want it to look and you start to get all of the nice contours all of the nice kind of fades between the different skin textures and yeah i've got my fingers on the, the squared bracket keys here this is allowing me to just kind of go bigger and smaller or i need it to be yeah, going to smooth out this bit underneath the chin here because the transition is quite harsh. Yeah, just re reducing the harshness on all of the different areas. And also you'll notice on the chin here, if I kind of follow the darkness along, it's not smooth. So we're just going to smooth all that out. And this is something that definitely takes practice because if you've not come from a, a painting background, then yeah, this is a completely new, a new thing working out how to smooth skin and in terms of like luminosity and light. And you can start as well if you've got any way you want to kind of exaggerate say like the tip of the nose or in the eyes you can start to add a bit of lightness in there or darkness depending if you're dodging or burning but you can start to scoop the face a little bit within here too just turning the help player on and off can really help you could just kind of see anywhere that maybe you've missed so i can see just along my cheek here I could do it a little bit lighter Cool, so I turn it off. You can just kind of see how the dodge has affected stuff so far. Just kind of lighten things up, made the skin a lot smoother in the transitions. And then we can do the same with the burn tool as well. So anyway, we're going to add a bit of darkness. We just select the burn, the black mask. Again, we're painting on white, low flow. And you find when dodging and burning you can often lighten the skin a bit because you start off with the dodge so you're lightening so it's good to go back and make sure that you're adding the darkness back in and making sure that it's smooth so quite often when i'm doing burning i'll use a bigger brush to just kind of add the overall darkness back into that area and again you can add a little bit of contour to the skin say around the nose around the cheeks if you kind of just want to add a little bit more darkness a bit more shape to the face so that's looking good. Let's get a bit of shape into the forehead. Yeah, right. So let's turn the help layer off. And you can just see dodge and burn before and after. It starts to really sculpt the face. I zoom out to here. You can see what a difference that makes. 
And again, with dodge and burn, it's a good idea never to go too fast. Quite often what I do is I'll edit because that's kind of what my eyes are seeing. But then I'll just bring back the opacity to just like a little bit lower because then that generally brings it back into more of a natural realm. Wherever, whereas when you're actually editing it, you kind of you lose sight of what's realistic. You keep going based on just the light and dark areas. So yeah, so by bringing back that 72%, I feel like, yeah, that looks really natural now. And if we look at kind of where we started compared to where we are now, again, very subtle changes, but just really perfects it. So at this point, you can kind of continue on to the rest of the body, start to dodge and burn the arms, legs, body, whatever, whatever bits of skin are on show. Uh, you can also do this with a clothing if you want to. Um, what I'm going to do for the next step is, you could, again, you can leave this here. Like if you're happy with how it looks now, you could stay there. If you want to kind of go one step further, then we can go into frequency separation and just really take things to another level um, of kind of smoothness. Cool. So to do frequency separation, if you don't have an action for that, and we're going to make a copy of everything that's on there. So we're going to fasten it all and make a new layer. So I'm going to do that by Command, Option, Shift and E or Control, Alt, Shift and E if you're on a PC. It's going to merge everything into one layer. It's going to make a duplication of that. And the bottom layer, it's going to call that color. And top layer, we're going to call that detail. And it's going to turn off the detail layer for now. Just work on the color. So on this color layer, I'm going to go to filter, noise, median. It's going to select an area on the skin here with this square. And that will bring it up into this window. So I can see what's happening. And I want all of this skin texture to disappear. So you can see if I did this at, say, 15. So what you want to do is you want to set this to a number that is just where it kind of turns from being skin texture into no skin texture. So you want to make sure that that's separated. So yes, yeah, so we've got a nice blurry area here. We've kind of lost all of the skin texture that's in there. So we're going to click OK on that. Uh, again, this will depend on the size of your image. So do have a play around with this to see what works best. You don't want to go too far with it, but you want it to, yeah, again, just be that point where it's kind of not skin texture anymore. It's just about blurry enough that you can no longer see it. So now that's blurred, we're going to turn our detail layer back on. And I'm going to go to click on that. Image, apply. Image, apply image. And we're going to select the color layer. I'm going to set the blending mode to subtract. And then we want our offset to be scaled to offset 1, 2, 8. So just have a quick look here. Make sure that we've got the blurred layer, which is called color here. Blending mode, subtract. Opacity, 100. Scale to offset, 128. And always make sure the source is the image that you're currently on, which it should always load in. Press OK. And then this brings up this weird gray layer that is a high frequency layer that contains all of our details. So this has got all of our skin texture on. So if we zoom in far, you can kind of see all of the skin texture is still within this image. Now, if we change this from normal to linear light, it then merges back the two layers into one. But we've got the detail layer, which is just the details. And then we've got the color layer, which is just the kind of blended colors. So what I like to do now is I'll just make it, put those into a group just to neaten things up. We call it FS for frequency separation. And I'm going to turn off the detail layer. And we're going to start to blend this underneath color. Come to my brush tool and then select the mixer brush at the bottom. Make sure we've got our color blurred layer below selected. And then we're going to, with not too big a brush, we've got everything set here to wet 80, load 75, mix 90, and then my flow is down to nine. But I think having a low flow kind of helps it keep it quite natural and not allow you to just kind of like move the colors too far and blend them too quickly. With the shape of the face, kind of blending similar colors into similar colors. So we're not going to go from this light color here in that direction from light to dark. We're always going to work in the same color plane. And it's just about going down, softening everything, just making sure that everything blends really nicely into everything else. So working just this highlight here, and then I'm going to slowly come out in a circle following the shape of the face and just working across any light lines where it blends from one color to another. I'm just going to blend those two together just to soften them up. Working into the shape of the chin, just doing circles around here, just 
blur her lips a little bit. I'm going to come down and do some legs here. Again with the legs it's important to not go too massive with your brush. It's good to keep the texture and the colours as similar as they are to how they are now. So for example don't just smooth out any kind of knee joints. Any highlights are working exactly as it is on there. So we're just going to smooth the texture and the kind of like skin complexion that's below it. And this is a really good way to smooth out wrinkles in clothes as well. If you wanted to start getting rid of some of these wrinkles or if there was a couple of little folds in there that you weren't quite happy with. If it's something that's not textured like this is a bit harder to do it on because the texture below it is so strong. But if it's like a t-shirt or just like some sim simple fabric that's of one colour. Yeah this is a really easy way to just start smoothing out those wrinkles. Cool so I'm going to turn the detail layer back on. And if I just show you the face now. You can see if I turn frequency separation on and off, again how it just softens everything. It still keeps all of that detail within the skin texture. And what you can do now is if you, if you want to go further with the skin texture, you can come to the detail layer and then just start working very similar to how we did at the start with the healing brush tool and the clone tool. So just go and just take off any extra little bits of kind of things that you might have missed initially that now you see a bit more because things are a bit smoother. So for example I noticed one little blemish here so I was going to make sure now because this is just a detail layer I want it to be current layer whereas before it was all layers. So I'm just going to select this just get rid of this little blemish into the nose and now's the time we could start to colour the image or add any kind of extra dodge and burn or anything we want to really kind of start to really give it personality like start to add your own style into it because at the moment all we've done is just cleaned up everything and it's basically just exactly as the raw image was taken but everything's cleaned up. So now it's the time if you wanted to start to colour things that's when you could go and do that. But for now I'm really happy with that image. So to just show you a quick before and after we've got the initial image and then after our editing so we've gone through a healing, dodge and burn and frequency separation. Then we get to this final image here which I'm really pleased with. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any value from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider subscribing because we do plenty of these videos on this channel. Uh, I'm going to do a lot more editing videos going forward because it's nice to kind of just show my process as I'm working. And remember always be creating. See ya!